Yo guys, if you like this music, down below it will, it will be in the description. Go check them out. What is up everybody on YouTube and welcome to another video of Visual JT Woods. You know what, I've kind of realized that I've collected a lot of airsoft guns uh, from previous years that um, I don't know if I'll use. I might use them. Um, so I'm going to actually show you guys like my from which ones I actually got first. So here's the first one, guys. All right, guys. So this is one of my very first airsoft guns. Of course, it's a Springer. Of course, it's broken, though. Um, it's never been used for airsoft, just mostly playing around with it and everything. Um, its magazine is really nice. I really like it. It's really big. I wish it was a CO2 mag because I love this type of magazine. And um, I don't know. I wish the other 1911 that I got had this type. Uh, it holds about 13 rounds in it. Again, it's spring powered. It's broken, so it doesn't really work anymore. But I really did love the color of the tan and everything. Of course, you can also see the label is also uh, wiped off and everything. So. I got this gun at a dollar store um, back in 2015, I believe. 2015, I got this. And uh, other than that, I thought it was a really great gun. Um, but yeah, that is my first gun. Of course, it only has a safety and a single shot on this side. This is Springer, really longer than what my all metal black one is. And its FPS is about, I think it was around like 200 FPS. Again, I got it at a dollar store, so it's a Springer. It's not going to be something special or anything. It does have a little laser light here, which is what I don't use. Actually, the laser that came with it is the laser that I'm going to be running with my Scar L. So the laser doesn't even get used on this anymore, and it also came with a laser strap to hold it in place. So other than that, if it wasn't broken, I would definitely use this, and I might actually fix it um, later in upcoming, um, you know, airsoft videos. Uh, it is six millimeter BB, so it's really nice small gun. So I really do like it. All right, guys, this is my second one. I got this one around 2016, um, a year after the 1911 pistol, the uh, Springer. Again, this one is a pistol, or this one is a Springer, so it's only a single shot. Then you gotta actually pull back on the mechanism. But what what I really love about the MP40, um, even though I got ripped off of this one, uh, because I was told it was a AEG. Um, I bought this, like I said, back in 2016 uh, on eBay, and um, someone put it down as an AEG, and uh, I got ripped off. Um, I paid fifty dollars for it, and soon to find out it was a Springer. Um, and I loved the MP40. I adore the MP40 above all from playing, you know, Call of Duty. I always use the MP40. It's just a great gun, uh, especially in the 2005 version um, of Call of Duty 2 from 2005 on Xbox 360. I love that game, and I always ran with the MP40. The MP40 is so compact, lightweight, it feels and everything else. But even though I got ripped off for it, it's still a good gun. I It's not broken. Six millimeter BBs. Um, it came with the strap and the scope that I'm also going to be running with my SCAR L. Um, again, it is a single shot Springer. Very good reliable gun. The best thing about it is that the mechanism to pull back actually folds down in the front so you can flip it out like that, fold it down like that, fold it up, pull back, and everything, and then fire. The awesome thing is also that the um, the buttstock actually folds under the gun and folds out. So push this button here, fold it out, and then fold this back. Now, I've played with this one a lot outdoors, so the this has kind of gotten a little wobbly. It used to be whenever I first got it, it was really nice and stationary. Now it is all plastic, so it will get used over time. But again, um, it's a really good gun, 6mm BBs, and I even, whenever I got this uh, the same year, I actually bought a um, MP40 reproduction uh, mag pouch for the magazine. It only came with one magazine. The magazine holds about 32 rounds, so 
it is a really good gun. So this is the reproduction MP40 uh, magazine holster that I got. It's reproduction of a WW2 uh, D, DAK, I think it was DAK uh, Africa Core um, color mag pouch. That's uh, a three pouch. I only have one mag though, and I always use it for my 32 round MP40 stick mag. Um, you know, I, I guess you could probably use this for a Sten if you wanted to. I think Stens actually use the same um, BB cartridges as this one. Uh, the MP40 that I that I was ordering off eBay back in 2016, it was made by Eagle. Uh, I don't know if they're around or anything anymore, but it was made by Eagle, I guess. It says Eagle on the side. Um, but it's really nice, and I did get a slip of paper that came with the MP40 showing all the different you know, uh, BB guns that Eagle had, and one of them was the Thompson and the Sten, which I believe that you can actually use this type of mag pouch for them, or just get an a authentic or reproduction, you know, mag pouch for those two weapons if you want. But me, I got a reproduction of the German DAK Africa Core um, three-round mag pouch color. And this is my newest 1911 uh, pistol um, without an orange tip. Believe it or not, I got it off of at, at Walmart for $25 um, here in um, Ohio. And uh, what really struck me the most was why it didn't have an orange tip. Um, now, of course, this isn't a regular BB gun. This is actually a pellet gun, and I did not know that. Well, I it, it still shoots BBs. You can actually get plastic or metal to shoot out of this. It's all metal. It's actually smaller than my first 1911-45. Um, but its FPS is around 400, believe it or not. Um, that's what it says on the box, so that's what I'm technically sticking to because I don't have one of those little you know, number finders on how fast the joules or the FPS is. So I'm just going off what the boxes say for each one of these guns. And this one shoots around 400 to 410 FPS. So I really can't use it in a CQB area here in Canton um, because the arena for that is below 400, which is around 375 or lower. And I can't really use this gun. Now, I do want to use it, but I'll probably only have to use it in an outdoor field um, that can that is allowed to use 400 FPS. Now, as I was saying again, like the other uh, 1911 for the mag, I like that one. But what I don't like is with this stick mag. I, I just don't like it. It's very flimsy, it feels like. And of course, this pistol is a Daisy Powerline 11A1. Um, and it's actually shorter. It's really shorter. Um, but it's all metal. It feels really heavy. I think it weighs around three pounds, I think the box says. Um, it came with, you know, some basic things that, you know, you get with an airsoft gun, I guess, at Walmart or a BB gun or a pellet gun. Just some, you know, shooting range target things in it. Instruction manual, the owner's manual, and the gun itself. Um, and I got this one. It was the last one on the shelf at Walmart here in Ohio. Um, and I, I admire the 1911, especially this, but I do wish it was longer, like maybe the same length as my old one that I got in 2015. But this one I picked up this year in 2018. And it's really, really nice and powerful. It's a CO2 gas blowback. Um, you pop this cover right off of the pistol grip, and you see the uh, where the... CO2 goes on, and uh, on the back handle, you actually pull out and pull down on this to actually insert it, and then it's really hard to puncture the CO2 whenever you try and push it back in. It, it does kind of want to fight with you, so that's the only thing with the Powerline uh, 1911 um, that I don't really like, but I do like how these sights are not raised up a lot. They're actually lowered more. And all in all, it's a really nice gun. The only problems that I have is that I can't really use it inside the range, and it's not lower in FPS, and the magazine is 
a stick mag and it holds around 16 mags, which is more than what my old 1911 had that I got in 2015. But other than that, it's still a good gun. All right, guys, and this is the other 400 FPS uh, gun that I have for Airsoft. And again, more reasons why I got the Scar L. Because, again, I can't use a 400 FPS weapon on the field here in Canton for the indoor field, maybe for the outdoor field. But for the indoor field that we have, which is the only one that I know of, you can't really use a 400 FPS. It has to be either 375 or below. And this is the Lancer Tactical M4. Now, whenever I got this gun, I really didn't want it. I honestly don't like the M4 platform. I just, it's, it, I don't know. It's just that the fact that, you know, the upper receiver here is kind of cut off from the barrel, uh, you know, shroud up here, I guess is what you would call it, the barrel shroud, or the handle thing for the barrel. Anyway, long story short, um, I just don't like that with the M4, and I really did want the scar. Now this is all plastic, and everything. It's 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 still a good gun, um, but it's just, mm, I really just don't know what to say about it. I just don't like the M4 platform or the AR15 platform uh, in real life. It just looks. It just looks weird. Now, I know the comments down below are going to be all, uh, well, the M4 is better. Than, I, I understand. The M4, the AR-15, is a lot better weapon. But I think that the SCAR-L and everything is a lot more better um, than the M4 or AR-15 platform. But this is the Lancer Tactical 6mm BB Airsoft uh, rifle. Um, now, Features that I just found out about this gun after I, long after I made the unboxing video about this, is that this doesn't pull out. This little piece doesn't pull out. I don't know what it does still. I seen it on YouTube a long time ago, uh, maybe about a week ago, um, which is still a long time ago. Um, and I guess it does something when you push it in. Now, mine actually does go in. But I don't know what it does. So if you guys know what it does, uh, please leave a comment down below to inform me on this for future videos if I ever get another, you know, type of gun that has that um, built into it. But other than that, I, it's just that the M4, it, especially this one, whenever I try and hold it up here, it wants to go up. It wants to push itself up. And I don't want to break it. And that's why I'd rather have a airsoft gun um, that has the barrel and the upper receiver all in one, like the Scar L. But other than that, if you like the M4, I would definitely pick up this Lancer Tactical M4. It's really nice. It's a, I forget what the name was, but it is an M4. It's a CQB M4, I, I guess is what it says on the box. I have the box right beside me um, only for that one. The other ones I read off and, you know, I have a piece of paper over here reading off the FPSs for those. But the box for the Lancer Tactical hardly has any information on it. So I'd have to literally open the box and I, I don't feel like doing that. Too much editing. Um, <laughs> but... It is a really nice gun if you're into the, you know, M4 platform. Of course, you got a bottom, top, and side picatinny rails on the, uh, you know, barrel. And you also have a picatinny rail up on the top. Uh, it's really nice. It came with, you know, one high cap mag, uh, which is 140 rounds. Really nice, really nice. Came with a strap. Came with a pistol grip um, up at the uh, front the gun for underneath it came with two side uh, mounts for it uh, so you don't you know hurt your hands on this and it's just a really 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 good gun so I don't know if I can use it chances are it'll be in an outdoor range not the indoor range because the FPS is 400 and this is my favorite of all of them I mean even the MP40 that I said I adore the MP40 but even the MP40 doesn't even compare to my love for a Scar L. Even a real Scar L 
is just beautiful. Now, I did want the FVC version, which is all metal, besides the polymer bottom. This one is all polymer. So I had to go a little bit cheap uh, for the budget. But other than that, it is a really good gun. I can literally hold this thing up here compared to the M4 where I had to actually, instead of holding it up here and being afraid that I'd break the barrel off, pushing up because of how hard I am with these guns, I had to hold the M4 down here by the magwell. So this one I can literally hold up here with no problem because the upper receiver is all in one, even with the barrel, um, because it's all one piece of plastic, which is what I love. Again, folding stock, very CQB, tight quarters, compact rifle, very easy for carrying, um, and just all around great. I mean, I love this Scar L. Of course, you can tell I don't really have the attachments on it right now. I just took it off for this video but I will be running a scope and the uh, first 1911 uh, 45's uh, laser sight on here. I do have to get some batteries for the laser sight. It came with two high cap mags equaling the M4 high cap mag, which was 140. And it's just a really awesome gun, especially with its flip up front and rear sights and the rear sight can be adjusted for elevation and wind. Uh, it's just all really nice. Now, what I was finding online with Scar L's, I don't know if maybe it's because it doesn't come with this one. It just comes with the all metal ones, but I guess you can actually use a tool to adjust the, um, the sights up here from the front. And I was looking, and some people could actually take this piece off. Uh, mine is able to come off, but it doesn't have a tool in there. So I guess maybe it's just for good looks, I guess, but it doesn't come with mine for the tool. I even had a shotgun um, sling that I bought a long, long time ago. I think that was around the same time I got my very first Airsoft Spring Pistol, which was 2015, after graduating high school. And I attached it to the Scar L and then made it into a three-point sling instead of just a regular two-point sling by uh, cutting off a little, you know, hook from another sling, um, which was actually for a computer case, and I cut it. I cut the little thing in half and then went through the sling here, and now it's a three-point sling instead of a two-point sling. So I'm really good at working with things. I don't know how to take this gun apart completely yet. I do want to learn how, so that way maybe in the future I can upgrade the Scar L. But for right now, the FPS on this shoots around 325 to 360. And I got this gun off of evike.com. I would definitely go check them out. It's really great. Uh, this gun, whenever I got it, it was dropped from 200 to 170. So it all around, it's a good price range, and it's still going for that amount right now. So I would definitely go and pick it up. Really do love the Scar L, but the MP40, eh, for my love with the MP40, it's kind of a smash with these two. They're just butting heads. The MP40 against the Scar L, so I might also have to use the MP40 in future videos as well. And maybe I might also run both of them. Because as of right now, I am looking for another pistol. If I can't get the Springer pistol, you know, up and running and fixed, then I'm definitely going to get another pistol, which is below the 400 FPS. But I'm not sure. As of right now, I literally have a lot, lots of guns. I have five guns total. And that's a lot, even for me. But it, it took a lot of years to actually save them up. Again, I got this gun like a couple, last month, I believe it. Last month or somewhere around that. Um, it's a really, really nice gun. Um, go check the unboxing video for this. Uh, it, it's really nice. Um, I do hate it though because I try to make my videos actually go shorter instead of being so long and when you're trying to find music <laughs> to put in your videos, it's really kind of hard to make the music go completely all through the videos, and I had to use four different musics for the unboxing with this one. 
So I'm going to be looking for an hour long music videos for all my future ones. So that way I have an hour long of background music inside my videos so I don't have to necessarily put four videos all in one. And next I'm going to show you my gear that I'm going to be running. All right guys, so this is the gear that I'm actually going to be running. Now this gear is all homemade. These straps are actually for computer straps. Um, we have a tactical belt. Um, I think it's a battle belt. I think it's what it's called. And I just took these computer straps, looped it through the holes in the belt, and made it into a type of homemade German-style Y-straps, which whenever I did this, was whenever I had my MP40. So the MP40 mag... Uh, magazine uh, pouch was actually going to be on this, but since I have the Scar L, uh, I actually have a pouch for M4 and M16 style magazines. So this is what I'm going to be running with. I have my three magazine pouch for three magazines. Um, it is a army camo. And it's really nice, really awesome. On the back of that, I have nothing. Right here, I have a water pouch, um, specifically to hold, you know, anything from spare batteries to spare BBs um, or anything like that. This is going to be my dump pouch. Um, so whenever I'm done with a magazine and it's empty, I can easily put it in there to hold it and also hold some other stuff on the outside too. Uh, and that's practically it for my gear is what I'm technically running. And it's really nice. I took a lot of effort, a lot of, you know, designing into this holster. Actually, this is technically it's Gen 3, if you want to call it. So it's a Gen 3 model of a homemade, you know, um, Y-strap uh, holster or body holster. Um, harness, holster, whatever you want to call it. I call it a holster. It makes everything a lot better um, because it holsters all these pouches on the belt, uh, including the belt itself. Um, but I really like it. Now, in the previous two models, whenever I made it, it was really, really bad. We had a lot of issues with the, you know, tightening and loosening on the straps for it to actually fit. And with me being so big, um, it, it was a lot difficult to do. All right, guys. Well, I hope you did like this little video of all the different airsoft guns that I have. Uh, sorry about all the noises in the background. Um, my mom's brother-in-laws were getting some food and one's in the shower now. So if you're hearing the water in the background, um, it's him in the shower. Um, so other than that, guys, I hope you do enjoy this small little airsoft, you know, showing video of all the guns that I'm going to be using. Hopefully I can get the first 1911 um, pistol that I had back up and operational to use as a sidearm along with my Scar L since they're both the same colors. And again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, leave a like, comment down below, hit the subscribe button. And if you're already not subscribed, please do so if you are all waiting to see some upcoming airsoft videos and hit the bell notification to be part of the notification squad when a new video from Viz with JT Woods gets uploaded. Well guys, that's all the guns I have. Hopefully I get some more in the future. I'm looking forward to having a great time playing airsoft this January and hopefully I can capture some gameplay and hopefully you all enjoy it. So I, until then, I will see you guys next time on another video with Vids with JT Woods. Bye-bye.